so I'm really feeling my outfit today and so was this random old lady at the thrift store. It was so funny. I was walking in and she like looked at me and yelled at me. She said, now that is a beautiful outfit. And the way she yelled it like took me off guard. She was like, you look like you must be the head of a school or something. <laughs> I was just like, I'm just a teacher, but thank you. This is what I picked up at the thrift store, a beautiful old edition of Peter Pan. I'm starting to compile a baby gift for my close friends who are expecting their first baby together. So that's where this beautiful edition of Peter Pan is going. And then I also picked up The Little Prince, which is one of my all-time favorites. I really like this edition, the white cover, I think it's very pretty. And then just kind of a simplified version of The Wind and the Willows. So those are my first three to add to the collection. Let me know if you have any good children's book recommendations that would look really cute in a basket like this full of little treasures for the baby. So I just got back from the cafe workspace that I have been loving for the past week and a half. Pretty much been my new home. And I actually haven't filmed in there yet just because I haven't really thought about it and I've just been enjoying it. But hopefully I can get some footage of me studying in there later on this week. What I typically do is I teach in the morning and then after lunch I head straight to the cafe workspace and I work on my master's degree all afternoon. And then I come home around 4.30 and start making dinner and just tidying up my house and getting ready for the evening. And this has been working really well. I find it works better than if I come home to work on my master's degree. Just because I live in a tiny house, everything is kind of one room. So my workspace is also my living space and my kitchen space. And there's something about like having a distinct place to work where it's work zone, no distractions, nothing else going on like an office that's super helpful and so I don't have an office or a library in my tiny house so it's really nice to have this cafe workspace available where there's really nice quiet and aesthetic study cubbies and study areas that I can go and do that and then just kind of compartmentalize okay I'm here to work on my masters and nothing else and then I can come home and get distracted by all the housework I need to do and the tidying up and whatever so that's kind of been my routine for the past week and a half so yeah, I will try to get some footage of me working in there next time. Now I'm going to sit down and type up a Substack article slash overlay for a video. I get a lot of questions on my YouTube video sometimes when I do a voiceover of me talking about books or something where people are like, is that actually you? Where are you getting this from? And I'm like, I actually did write that and people can't believe it and I don't know why because I am a writer and I do sometimes write nice things and I like to put them into video format somehow so I'm going to be working on that. Maybe by the time this video is up you'll have already seen that video, who knows. But that's what I'm going to do before I start cooking dinner for the night. So this week I've been wrapping up our study of the Iliad with my grade 9 and 10 students. We've been working through the Iliad for I think six weeks by now and so it's our last week which is super exciting and on Friday they're going to be presenting the lines that they've memorized. We'll be looking at our final assignments and all those good things. Um, but this week we also started reading Shakespeare's play Troilus and Cressida, which is based on the Iliad. So it follows the Trojans, Troilus and Cressida, who aren't really mentioned in the Iliad. Troilus is once. He's mentioned by another name towards the end of the book, but Cressida isn't. But what's cool about the play is that Shakespeare presents the Trojan War and the story of Achilles in a completely different way than Homer himself does. 
So the Greek poet originally was kind of celebrating the Trojan War. Not fully, but you can definitely detect, you know, the themes of glory and honor and duty and all these things in warfare, and it's celebrating the great heroes, Achilles and Hector and their mighty deeds. Shakespeare kind of does the opposite. Troilus and Cressida is almost an anti-heroic play in the sense that it kind of sheds all the main characters from the Iliad because they're all in the play as well, right? Achilles, Odysseus, as Ulysses, Agamemnon, Menelaus, Diomedes, Paris, all these guys are in Troilus and Cressida, but Shakespeare sheds them in a pretty poor light, especially Achilles. Um, we haven't reached this part in the play yet in class, but eventually Achilles is going to kill Hector in a most undignified way, in a way that totally violates kind of the norms of warfare. Whereas in the Iliad, when Achilles kills Hector. He does so in a very kind of awe-inspiring, glorious way, in a sense. I mean, some of his, ac his actions afterwards with Hector's body are disgusting and terrible. He violently degrades Hector's body, but the killing itself isn't... He doesn't kill Hector when Hector's unprotected, for example, and doesn't have his armor or isn't able to defend himself in the Iliad. But such is the case in Troilus and Cressida, and so it's just so cool to read this right after reading the Iliad because everything makes sense to both my students and myself. Like we've been living in that world for so long and we're just continuing to live in it, but we're seeing it in a different light from a different perspective. Yeah, I just wanted to share my excitement about that. I'm really looking forward to doing this study with my students and to digging deeper into exactly what Shakespeare thought about the Trojan War and about the Greek heroes and about Greek culture and society. Because it seems like he wasn't necessarily the biggest fan of the values and the virtues that are highlighted in the Iliad. That's my little rant about some of the awesome things that I'm teaching. I just, again, I'm so so grateful for my job where every day I get to read great literature and deepen my own understanding and knowledge of great literature and talk about it with very intelligent and very keen students who share my love and passion for books. It's just, it's amazing. <laughs> to start a rather ambitious arts and crafts project. I'm going to try to build an interactive map of the Peloponnese so that when I'm teaching the Peloponnesian War to my students over the next few weeks, we can like move Spartans and the Athenians around and like mark where the battles took place and just kind of track the events of the war in a visual interactive way. I just think that'll be something that everybody enjoys and also just a great teaching tool that will hopefully kind of bring the Peloponnesian War to life for my students. So I am about to get started on this. I'm going to start off by drawing out my map of the region and labeling cities, etc. And then I will need to look for pins and flags and things to poke into these foam boards. So yeah, that's my plan for now.
this is what I have so far for the map. I'm actually really stressing out about teaching the Peloponnesian War because the text is just very difficult, very technical. I'm worried that my grade 9s and 10s are going to be really turned off by it and intimidated. I myself am intimidated by it. The book is so technical and so detailed. It kind of takes a military mind to decipher it, in a sense. So I'm just trying to figure out how we're going to read through this and digest it and comprehend it. This is one of the tougher works that I've had to teach and that I've ever encountered, if I'm being totally honest. Look what's happened to our gardens. They've literally just acquired every leaf in the neighborhood. And now we're on our way to a hockey game, which is about the least bookish thing I could do this weekend, but we got free tickets, so we're going with some friends, and it should be a nice brain break from the Peloponnesian War, so 